Hey guys, good afternoon. Uh, it's Becca Hilburn here, and I am going to continue my July 2006 Sketchbox Basic versus Art Snacks. So if you guys haven't, I would really appreciate it if you checked out the unboxing video by clicking the card right here, or um, just checking out my entire Art Snacks versus Sketchbox playlist for all of the videos. We're gonna start now with our art snacks going over the prices and also going over uh, demonstrating the materials so in this month's art snacks we got a little container of the masters brush cleaner we received a container I'm not a container a tube of core watercolor paint and I got gam permanent gamboge and um, you're not necessarily going to receive the same color as me I received a Princeton number no. six round. This is a synthetic brush that's trying to imitate Kalinsky sable, which is one of the best fibers you can do watercolor painting with. And a Pentel Arts Hybrid Technica um, gel pen. We also received the world's tiniest pad of adorable Yubo, which is a synthetic polypropylene paper. That means the, the water or whatever you're putting on it does not soak in. So, we've got our MSRPs on the card, and we also have the lowest retail I could find. So, the core watercolor paint is $15.79 retail, according to the card. Um, I was able to find my color in eleven oh five, and the thing about nice watercolor paints is their price based on their pigments. So your tube may be worth more than mine. Um, mine was eleven oh five through Dick Blick. My Princeton synthetic sable right here. The card says that's twelve fifty, but I found it um, for six dollars and nineteen cents at Jerry's Artorama. Um, the Masters Brush Cleaner and Preserver for a little tub like this is $5.59 MSRP. I couldn't actually find this exact tub. Um, the last time I had a tub this small, it came in a kit with like four other items. And I have a large, t larger tub in my bathroom, but it's still not this size. The closest comparable item I could find was a 2.5 ounce tub for $5.38 on Dick Blick. Um, the Technica pen is $2.99 MSRP, according to the card, and it is, let's see if I can find it, $2.21 on Dick Blick. Now, the Yupo is a bonus item, so they didn't charge, there isn't a charge for this, it wasn't included in the total, but I found a 10 sheet pad, and I actually don't know how many sheets are in here, it looks like maybe 10 though, um, uh, five inch by seven inches for four forty two on Dick Blick. So our MSRP total is thirty three dollars and ninety two cents. Our lowest retail total, discluding the UPO since it is a bonus item, is twenty two dollars and oh four cents. You pay twenty dollars to get this box shipped to you. That's not twenty plus five. That's twenty flat if you live in the U S. So even with the lowest MSRP, Art Snacks still ahead of the curve this month. Yay! Usually when I do these unboxings, I want the box to come in at a retail value, like um, buying from those big box art supply stores, because that's not the wholesale or bulk prices. I'm not even taking those prices into consideration. Those are the prices companies have access to. Normal consumers like you and me do not. Um, I usually want the box to at least be worth $5 less than what I pay for the box, discluding shipping. Our Art Snacks keeps coming in above. So that's awesome. Yay, Art Snacks. All right, we're going to take a look now at our sketch box. And they were kind enough to include MSRP recommended MSRP or retail price or however you want to however you want to call it on the card so I can go through that I didn't have to like dig around to try and find the manufacturer's suggested price because some items you just can't really find that like last time when I was doing pan pastels they didn't have MSRP they had you know suggested retailers and I mean the, some of them were the big box stores that I've gotten kind of fussed at by you guys who are for referring to so um Got my prices right here. So we got, we received three tubes of Van Gogh 
watercolor. And those, according to this card, are four dollars and eighty cents each. Um, they're three twenty nine on Dick Blick, in a, in a little disturbing because regardless of your color, you're paying three twenty nine. And like I just told you guys, nicer watercolor paints, you're going to pay according to the pigment used. When everything is a flat rate, that tells me they're not using very good pigments. Um, next is the, where is it? The Princeton Bamboo Brush number four. That's what this is, size four, it's a round. Um, their retail price is $6.15. I had trouble finding this. I actually found this at on the Walmart site and they wanted like $15 for it. So I guess Walmart is not the lowest when it comes to art supplies, unless you're willing to bring in your proof that it's less elsewhere because they price match. So I guess you could work that and you could find like your cheapest price for an art supply, you know, they sell at Walmart and then get Walmart to price match that. Um, so 615 MSRP, I couldn't find anything better than 16. 50 uh, $16.15. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, guys. A little bit mush brain today. So, next we have two loose Daler Rowney watercolor postcards. And these are, let's see, they're Pres the Langton Prestige, which I've used before. It's not my favorite. My favorite is Arches, but it was all right. And they want a dollar each. Um, you can get them in a pack though for 75 cents each and I believe I found that on Amazon. You guys can find links to where I found everything in the blog post that's coming up on natasuit.blogspot.com so keep an eye out for that. Um, lastly was their water brush and they claim a retail price of $5.50. Since it is their water brush I couldn't find exactly. I found multiple water brushes that would be considered uh, competitive or similar like the Niji and the Kurataki and the Pentel Quash and all of those cost more than this do, than their MSRP sometimes by like four dollars you can find that list with prices and links again on the blog but I felt like if this thing works that was a good deal and um, right now Sketchbox is doing a grab box where they put some of the stuff from past boxes plus some new items in a blind box, basically even more blind box than this. So if you want one of these, you might be able to get one of those that way. Anyway, our total MSRP is $28.05. Our lowest retail is $23.02. Sketchbox is uh, $25.00. The Sketchbox Basic, which is what I have, as you can see, um, is $25 plus $5 shipping. They, um, right? Yeah. So this month they came out over my target goal as well. So very good, Sketchbox. I'm so happy to see you guys up in that up in that value. Um, I'm really excited about their Sketchbox signature items because it seems like they're making these things um, or working with companies to make things special for them. They also have a signature marker. Um, I really look forward to seeing what other signature products they can release in the future because that probably means they um, are paying less for them rather than buying something made by someone else, sold by someone else in bulk, and then re you know reselling that. Um, I hope at some point they have enough of these things that they can do a box of their own with just these, which I would be interested in. And I'd also be interested in being able to purchase these sort of things, you know, um, from their shop instead of in the boxes. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. I've got a cup of clean water. I'm gonna set aside my Langton Prestige watercolor postcards um, because I want those for later. So I'm gonna put those back in the box. some Canson Biggie XL paper that I cut, you know, just, just for like swatching purposes, which is what we're doing today. So I have here a tray of clean water. Usually what I would do when I'm cleaning brushes is I would do it under running water at my sink. You want cold water whenever you're cleaning out or working with brushes. You don't want to use hot water because the glue that's in the ferrule will end up getting melted or reactivated and your bristles will come out, ruining your brush. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this Masters soap. It has sort of like a lemon balm sort of smell. It's actually very, very pleasant. I really like this soap. I use it regularly, not this one, but a different one. 
I'm going to go ahead and clean out both my Sketchbox and Art Snacks brushes scent. When you get a new watercolor brush or when you get any sort of a new brush, it has sizing in it. Um, and that's just like a glue or um, a stiffening agent to keep the bristles in this shape. This very sharp, pointy shape. It just protects the bristles. So we're going to wet our brush. We're going to scrub it in the pan until a lather forms. You want to get nice and, and clean. And then we're going to wash it. Like I said, I would normally do this under running water. Make sure I don't redeposit any gunk. And then you want to reform the bristles back into a point and if need be, let them dry that way. That's how you preserve your bristles. Now this is, I think it's goat hair. It's a Princeton Sumi brush. I still need to finish doing research on that. So if you're interested, please check out the blog. It has sizing in it. Clean out the sizing. Use the conditioner. And this will work with synthetic brushes too. It is conditioner and soap. All right, so it's all up in those brushes. Clean it out in the water. You want to get all of it out. You don't want it interacting with your paints. And already I feel several bristles coming out in my hands. I'm not, I'm really just like reshaping it. I'm not pulling it. And I'm also testing to see if there's still soap in it. Lastly, we have the water brush, which actually doesn't really need to be cleaned with brush cleaner, but I've got it out. Might as well. because it does have some sizing in it. All right, how do you, this is screwed on really tight. All right, there we go. And these are all synthetic bristles. And water brushes take a little bit of getting used to. For me, a lot of bit of getting used to. I always end up putting down too much water and then my piece looks like muddy and washed out and kind of weird. But I think that's more on me because I've seen people do some really lovely things with water brushes. Want to get all of that soap, all of that sizing out. All right, so I've demonstrated the brush cleaner. There are a few other ones on the market, but this is really my favorite. You can also use a very mild, unscented baby shampoo to clean your brushes, especially if you use inking brushes, and then recondition them with, again, a very mild, unscented, if possible, hair conditioner. Whoops, whoop, whoop. So if you live like I grew up in Podunk, Louisiana, you don't have to buy the brush cleaner if you don't have access to it. You can start with, you know, very gentle baby shampoo. So I'm going to clean this up and be right back. You guys see before you a cavalcade of water brushes. And these aren't all that are on the market. I believe Mind of Watercolor did a really good overview of several different brands. So you guys should check that out if you're interested in water brushes. I have here the Sketchbox Signature Brush. I have, um, oh shoot, it's a Sakura Koi full-size water brush. A Faber-Castell T-Prime water brush, and it has a piston. Um, a small, like a travel size Pentel Aquash brush. And I do believe these are two Kuratake Japanese water brushes. And these came from my travel watercolor kit. And um, some of them are kind of dirty because they've, <laughs> they've seen a lot of, of use. But I am going to... Some of these also have water in them, so I don't want to disembowel them on video. What am I doing? I want to... Most water brushes, including the signature, do feature a back posting cap. And that means the cap will go fit on the back. That prevents it from getting lost while you're, you know, you're kind of working one handed. They pretty much all function the same way, um, with the exception of the Faber-Castell T-Prime. You squeeze them to get the water to move to the front, and you fill the barrel, at least with the Kuratake ones, through this little piston. So you need to submerge these or take the piston out and fill it out of sink. Um, not all have that not piston. Um, like It's almost like a gasket, but it's not quite. Not all of them have that little trap thing. Some of them you just go ahead and fill. Um, 
this the little that little black sort of collar prevents it from leaking uh, too much in travel. It's, it's sort of a limiter. Now with this one, you can't remove the the that this thing the limiter. So you use the piston to suck water in, and you squeeze the sides to push water out. And I found like Faber Castell is just not my favorite one to use. Um, it's clear that they tried to put some good design into it, but it didn't succeed in my opinion. Um, some are softer and squishier than others. The uh, Sketchbox signature has a little bitty posting clip. It's actually very, very, very similar um, to the Kuratake model little bit longer so it's not going to travel as well it will hold more water so it's sort of like um kuratake's new brush 2o is supposed to be bigger so it's sort of more and more like that size than like the original kuratake uh brush pen water brush i'm sorry so with this we're gonna go ahead and fill it up and i'm going to use some water from my cup o clean water and you don't have to do it this way. I'm doing it this way because I'm not at a sink. I'm just using a little pipette to fill my water brush. It is handy for those of you, though, who like to work with a water brush um, not in the field. I mean, it's handy to have one of those little pipettes anyway. And then you just squeeze it back on. Pretty much good to go. Don't need to wait for the ink or anything to reach the tip. You can just squeeze. This one's a little harder to squeeze than others. And the water already starts to move to the tip. So it is, so far, it's pretty comparable to any other water brush on the market. So, you know, it's nice to see um, that Sketchbox is trying to introduce their own products at an, maybe at an affordable price point. Um, I haven't seen them sold open stock yet so I can't tell you if that's really if they're really gonna sell it for 550 MSRP or if they're gonna uh, you know increase that price go ahead and put my travel kit ones to the side though I don't want them getting mixed up all right so first things first um, I'm just gonna sort of test everything together and I'll tell you guys what is from what box. So I wanna test the water fastness of the Pinto Arts. So we're gonna go ahead and put down a quick line. So it is not immediately water soluble. Now we're gonna do a 24 hour dry test and let this dry for 24 hours. And I gotta remember to take photos as I go. So I have something for those who prefer to read only to look at. Next up, we've got, so we've got three brushes total and four watercolors total. So we're gonna go ahead now and I think I'm gonna just gonna swatch with all three. We'll see how that goes. So this is the core watercolor. Now, um, it's a it's a tube watercolor so you can kind of work like this if you want or you can create thinner washes so far that um the princeton doesn't handle too bad it's got a matte finish on the body um it doesn't have as much belly as a regular um let me go grab a real sable or a real kalinsky sable i'll be right back so this one isn't in the best shape. I need to clean it and I need to kind of condition it. But this is a, a Blick Master, but it's squirrel. So you see how when wet it has kind of a belly to it? That's the problem with synthetics, is synthetics just don't have that belly. That belly helps hold color. It helps you draw, um, cover more area or draw a longer line. Um, until they can invent a synthetic with a belly you know i guess i'm going to be sticking to uh natural hairs 
when I can, when I can afford it. Um, at larger sizes, you really, they start becoming so prohibitively expensive for natural fibers that it's understandable that you would want to give something like um, Kalinske, I mean, a synthetic Kalinske a try. But I haven't found one yet. And I've tried a few because I'm cheap and I want to find an alternative if I can afford an alternative. Um, I haven't found one yet. Okay, now we're doing the goat hair sumi brush. And you're supposed to hold a sumi brush kind of like, like that. I've never really, I'd like to be more proficient at sumi, but I'm, I'm just not, I never. I never really picked it up. I have books on it and I always mean to take a class on it and I just haven't. All right, lastly, we're doing the water brush with the permanent gamboge. And for something simple like this, the water brush works quite well. I find that water brushes become frustrated when you're trying to do frustrating when you're trying to do more complicated pieces. Um, so they're great and handy for in the field, but they end up reactivating. They carry too much water and they end up reactivating prior layers. So this is our permanent gamboge from our um, art snacks. And it was tested with the, oh, that's not it the Princeton that's going to get water everywhere the Princeton the Sumi brush from the Sketchbox and the Sketchbox water brush and let's move on now to the Da Vinci and we'll do it the same way All right, we're starting off with olive green. Whoa, look at that. Goopy, making a mess, very liquidy already. That's one of the, I, the, and you know, I have purchased Van Gogh watercolors in the past to, you know, find out if they would be a, a good product to use in my work. And it's like this goopy messiness gets all over the place. Um, I have trouble getting them to dry out in a palette. So that's with the Princeton Synthetic. Now the Sumi brush. Sumi brush is interesting in that it has the capacity to hold so much more water. Um, you get a much nicer wash effect. Now the water brush. And you really shouldn't apply paint as thickly. I mean, that's not the point of watercolor. The point is not to apply it as thickly as you would gouache. It's to do, um, to start with more transparent layers of color, but I'm just trying to, I'm gonna need to clean these threads out. Just trying to demonstrate these for you guys quickly and efficiently. All right, so this Van Gogh was from my sketch box. Let's set that aside move on to the vermilion and i'm sorry if i seem distracted my cat's getting up to no good in the background look at this another and i'm not i'm not squeezing it i'm not applying any pressure it's just whatever binder they're using is very viscous um just sort of wants to overflow all over the place okay That's vermilion. Ought to do. If I had time, I ought to just leave these out on a sunny windowsill and see how the light affects them. Because the Van Goghs promise like superior light fastness. And it's just like, hmm. All right. I forgot I had two more to do. All right. Here is the Sumi brush. I think that could go on forever. And finally, here is the water brush. I 
Gonna make a mess already. Ah, oh, shoot. Got myself with a big glob of it that I had wiped off from around the collar. Ugh. Got to take a bath again. And that's cat hair. You know, that's how you know you visited my studio is when you're covered in stray cat hairs. All right, one more watercolor to test. And that is phthalo blue, which is kind of a blue green. So we've got, I, I'm kind of into this color scheme we've got going. We've got a yellow green. So this is as warm a green as you can, almost as warm a green as you can get. Um, we've got a really nice, hot, bright, orangey vermilion. And we've got a cool green, so that's that's some good contrast, I think. It's going to make my challenge a lot of fun. Yeah, look at that. That is a sexy blue. I'm very partial to blue greens. I'm sorry, and I really love art supplies. So, All right, so that was the Princeton. Now we've got the Sumi. Oh, look at that. And finally, well, got a lot on there, the water brush. All right, so, other than this big goober. Oh, it's going to get everywhere. In my studio, I use Viva Paper Towels for all my cleanup needs. Note, I am not sponsored by Viva Paper Towels. So, um, all that's really left to test in this overview is um, to go back tomorrow and do the 24-hour dry test. But also, we've got this teeny pad of Yupo, or we can use my giant pad of Yupo. But I think I would rather use my teeny pad of Yupo. So Yupo being polypropylene paper, several things we need to understand. Um, I'm going to try out the Technica. I am pretty sure it is going to be a huge mess because I've been trying to find, well, that's kind of cool though. It's kind of like a wash effect, like an ink wash. I've been trying to find a pin that will write on Yupo and then I can marker or paint over it. And this one is going to be allowed to dry for 24 hours. Now, I want to show you guys, and that means pulling in really close. I want to show you guys how amazing watercolors, if applied very lightly and gesturally, can look on Yubo. We'll start with the core because that came in our art snacks and this is an art snacks bonus item. So even with a synthetic, you end up getting a lot of coverage. So I'm gonna let this dry and, oh, I didn't mean to, <sighs> never mean to bump it, but I always seem to bump it. It's always in my way. I'm going to let this dry, and then I'll demonstrate how very easy it is to reactivate watercolor on Yubo. All right, so that was about 10 minutes for just this little wash to dry. And the reason is it has to evaporate into the air. It's not going to, like, soak into the paper. The paper is not going to help you. So if you want, in fact, there's still a shiny, one shiny spot. That's how you know it's dry. I mean, there you go. You saw that? Looks like a sequence. That's how you know it's dry on Yubo is when it's not as shiny. Now, areas that are that have a lot more um, concentrated paint will remain shiny looking and nope, that's dry. So um, first of all, I'm going to use the included Princeton synthetic, just clean water. And you guys can see that it reactivated the paint that was on the paper and spread it out. 
which can make using, you have to be smart and think about how you're going to go about using your Yupo, how you're going to go about handling your watercolors on this paper. And it's not something I can say I've mastered because I haven't. I've been playing around with it a lot and I've still got a lot to learn, but I think it's a really, oh man, I think it's a really interesting paper. I think it has a lot to offer. I think it's, uh, you know, finally something new under the sun. Um, another similar product is like, um, it's like Terra Skin paper and it's made from rock. And I have some and I need to test it for you guys. I just, you know, I do so much of this stuff. I don't have time. I'm going to let this layer dry and then I'll bring in some of the Da Vinci paint and we can see how it handles layering with different colors. Okay, so it's been like 10, 15 minutes. I still have a wet spot on my Yupo, but you guys can see it's mostly dry. I'm gonna go ahead with this uh, very leaky phthalo blue. And I throw away, threw away my, my paper towel. Oh no, I made it worse, you guys. You guys, I made it worse, I'm bleeding. All right, I can't continue on like this. Fortunately, I keep a stack of paper towels by my desk just for that reason. All right, so we've got ourselves a Princeton brush. We've got some Van Gogh watercolor. So as long as you don't overwork it, it doesn't seem to reactivate too quickly. If you want to do wet into wet techniques, I'll demonstrate that. Actually, let's go with vermilion. See, it mixes on its own very quickly. If you push it too much, it's going to turn to mud. So you want to be as loose and light as you can. This is just regular water. It's gonna, yeah, it's, I'm gonna regret this. Okay. Uh. So I very gently spritzed some regular water and you see how it created the created Z created these like little, I wasn't trying to saturate it. I just wanted to introduce some, some, some clean water into it. Um, it sort of created these, it's almost like if I had drop rubbing alcohol into it, you know, it pushed the pigment out of the way. I mean, if you enjoy doing sort of abstract watercolor painting, Yupo, excellent, excellent. A lot of interplay. It stays open a long time. There's a lot you can do with it. I'm going to let this all dry, and then I'll show you guys how very easy it is to clean your Yupo off if you did something you don't like. So it's been at least 30 minutes, <clears throat> and there's still a spot that just hasn't really dried yet. We're going to try spraying with water, not necessarily to reactivate it, but just to see what happens. I'm covering up my water test because, you know, I need those to not be activated early. So spraying with water does reactivate the pigment. Oh, excuse me, it does reactivate the pigment. If you put more on it, you might be able to get some flow. Let's try some of that olive green. Gotta be careful because this stuff gets all over the place. So you can't do too many layers on your bow because it will start to wipe away prior layers. Of course, y'all know I got to get a photo.
have any of you guys taken, um, you know, just headed over to the blog to see how the final review differs from the videos by any chance? Um, if so, do you guys find it easy to follow along with the photos that I take, especially if you've seen the video already? Um, if not, would you mind letting me know in the comments below um, just why not or if there's anything I could do to further encourage you guys to check that out? So I splattered some Van Gogh Vermilion in there too. I'm going to take a picture of it for posterity, capture how it looks right now, because it's probably not going to look like this when it's dry. And I'll check back in with you guys in, I guess, another 30 minutes when it's dried. All right, guys, I told you it would look different when it was done, and it really does. Um, so Yupo does allow your watercolors to keep some of their vibrancy, which is a plus, but like I said, it's pretty hard to control. Let's use the signature box, uh, water brush, and we'll just see how quick that wiped off. So you really want to be careful because even when it's dry, you're still going to, you're still going to... <sighs> you could reactivate your pigments. They, they don't really stain the Yupo. So I think that's it for what I can show you in my overview today. Tomorrow we're gonna check the water fastness of the Technica pen, both on the Yupo and on regular watercolor paper. So I'll see you guys tomorrow, bye. Hey guys, so it's been 24, excuse me, it's been 24 hours. I'm going to revisit my Technica inks. I'm also going to try to reactivate some of these watercolors. Sorry, I've got a case of the hiccups. <laughs> I'm using a Sakura Koi water brush because that's what I had handy. So this is the Yupo. As you can see, adding water does reactivate the Technica ink on the Yupo, but you do still get, you do still keep your line art, even though I'm scrubbing pretty, pretty intensely. Um, and this is, this could be really useful if you're doing an ink wash or, you know what, let's try something. Let's try wiping the excess off and then going at it again. Okay, so what I can see this being beneficial for is if you don't want to use pencil on your U-boat, you do want to use ink. You can do your preliminary drawing with ink. You can wipe it down after it's been allowed to cure for 24 hours, wipe the excess water away, and then paint on top of that, and then re-ink it if you want. Now, let's try on watercolor paper. And you guys can see that even though the Art Snacks card claims the Technica ink is waterproof, you can reactivate it. So it is not actually entirely waterproof, even after allowing it to dry for 24 hours. So these paints have, had, have also had 24 hours to dry. So I'm gonna try to reactivate them again using just a plain water brush. On the Yupo, it is very easy to reactivate the paint. So um, probably no amount of curing will make the paint on top of the Yupo permanent. You'd probably have to seal it. Let's try with, this is the permanent gamboge core and it has had 24 hours to dry. It reactivates as well. All right, this is the Thalo Blue Da Vinci. All right, Van Gogh, I'm sorry. It quickly reactivates. This is the Vermilion Van Gogh. Also reactivates. And lastly, the Olive Green 
So all four of the paints tested today, um, there's a, for, for paints that um, can be reactivated like this, there is a tendency for them to become muddy if you overwork them. So all of these colors, all of these paints have the potential for that. So if that is something you are concerned about, um, these may not be the ones for you. Okay, so I will see you guys in the challenge video. Thank you guys so much for watching my Art Snacks versus Sketchbox overview. I hope you guys found it useful. I hope you found it helpful. I hope you found it inspiring. I hope I was able to provide some answers to the materials inside the Art Snacks July box and the Sketchbox basic box. If I did, I would really appreciate it if you guys took a moment to leave a like down there somewhere down there in um underneath the video consider subscribing to my channel for even more content like this and leave a comment if you have any questions if you really like my content i would really appreciate it if you took a moment to use those social network sharing buttons underneath the video to share it to your social networks by introducing my content to your friends you're helping me grow my audience which is a huge deal and i would be very grateful if you could do that for me the last way you can help me out is by um contributing financially to my Patreon. And you can find more information about that at patreon.com slash natosoup. For the rest of this review, please check out natosoup.blogspot.com. And if you haven't yet, would you please take a moment and maybe tell me why you haven't checked it out so I can, you know, try to improve, try to make it more welcoming, more interesting to new, to new readers. So I'll see you guys in the challenge videos. Have a great day. Bye.